I bought something. <laughs> something that I've been eyeing up for the past year or so. Uh, you can see it behind me right here, or if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that I bought that totem coat. That infamous scarf jacket that you've probably been seeing everywhere. If you haven't seen it, then this is what it looks like. It is a gorgeous wool jacket with this beautiful kind of like stitching detail and it has a scarf attached to it, a matching scarf, and it's just gorgeous. But let me get straight to the point. It was 720 pounds, a very expensive piece of clothing. In fact, I think it's the most expensive item of clothing I've ever bought. And that's not including bags, because obviously bags are more expensive. And it's, it's a lot of money. <laughs> but like I said, it's something that I deliberated over for a really long time. And so in this video, I wanna talk about the five things that you might want to consider before making that expensive investment purchase. I'll be using my coat as the example, but of course you can apply it to any sort of fashion item that you have been thinking about. And I hope that this helps you make more considerate and intentional purchases, not just for expensive items, but for anything that you want to add to your wardrobe. Cost per wear. So I'm sure you have all heard of this concept, but the cost per wear is essentially the price of the item divided by how many times you will wear the item. And we want to get this cost down as much as humanly possible, which means we want to wear the item as much as possible. As a very general rule, because of course there are always exceptions to the rule, I do think that coats and bags are usually worth the investment. For the most part, a bag and a coat is something that you can wear with quite a big chunk of your wardrobe. And if you've chosen, chosen? And if you have chosen wisely, then it should be something that also doesn't date. So the way I thought about cost per wear with this jacket is that in the kind of mild weather that we have in London, I can wear this in the transitional seasons. I think this is the perfect piece to wear for those seasons for autumn and also for the spring that's upcoming soon. And I also think that on milder winter days, if I layer correctly, then I can definitely get away with wearing this as a coat as well. And so that's already three out of four seasons of the year that I can wear this jacket. I also really thought about the color that I would go for as well. So I think the most popular color is black. And believe you me, I am as surprised as you are that I didn't go for the black one. But the reason is because I want to wear it for the transitional seasons and especially for spring. I think that black might be too heavy and too dark, so I went for the gray one. So all those thoughts accumulated in my mind <laughs> and made me think that actually I can get a lot of wear out of this jacket. Despite it being 720 pounds, I can wear it through autumn, through winter, through spring and I can see myself wearing it a lot. <laughs> so think about the item that you want to buy. It might not even be an expensive item, even if it's, you know, a 30 pound pair of shoes. Are you going to wear those shoes more than a couple of times? It's worth thinking about the different ways that you can wear them, which we will get onto later. And just think about how you can bring the cost per wear of them down. Will you still want to wear it in the future? When spending money on something that we think is an investment item, I think that we should still want to wear it even after the excitement of purchasing this item has died down. So ask yourself, is this a timeless piece to me? It doesn't have to be timeless in the sense that it's a neutral, it's a classic, but something that you think is timeless for yourself in your own wardrobe? Or are you just purchasing it because it's trendy at the moment? It's so easy to feel like we need something <laughs> with social media and influencers and advertising just everywhere all the time, 24 seven. But I think that if we ask ourselves these questions before we buy anything, it will just make us question whether we truly want something 
or whether we want it just because we're seeing it everywhere all the time. I personally gravitate towards neutral and classic pieces because for me, that is the most sustainable way of shopping. It's by far the easiest way for me to get the most wear out of my clothes and just the biggest guarantee that I won't be bored of them in the future. One of my fashion goals, if you will, that sounds really corny, but it is what it is, is that when I'm older, I want to be able to look back at old photos and videos and look at my outfit and think, oh, I could still wear that today. And so that's why I sort of stick to classic pieces. It's just how I can be a more responsible shopper and not create excess waste by only buying things that I want to wear there and then. So taking my totem coat as the example again, I think that even though this piece is really trendy at the moment and it's like on Instagram all the time, at the end of the day, it's a gray coat with a matching scarf. And if you just think about those elements, that will always look stylish in my opinion. The trimming on it and the stitching detailing is what gives it that something extra, but it's not crazy enough that I think it will date or it will be something that I'll get sick of. There might be seasons where I put this jacket away for a year or two, but I think that this is something that I will keep coming back to. Is there a cheaper alternative that could suffice? So this is an interesting one because I think that a lot of the times when we're buying an expensive item, it's not just the item that we're buying, but it's also the brand behind the item. For example, a bag is just a bag, but once it has a Chanel logo on it, it becomes a 10,000 pound bag. <laughs> and so what we're actually paying for is the brand heritage, the marketing, the craftsmanship sometimes and the status that having that brand gives us, I guess. So when we truly ask ourselves, why do I want this? Is it this particular item that you want? Or is there an alternative item that you could get instead? In the case of this jacket again, I'm not gonna hold it up because it's really heavy and my arm is <laughs> aching. I have definitely seen online and in stores some scarf coats that um, shops are bringing out now, but they are all quite plain. And for me, it's this trim on the jacket that really draws me in and makes me think like, wow, this is really something special. I've also seen some cheaper knockoffs from like online fast fashion brands, but from what I could see, the composition is mainly synthetic materials and I just don't think that the quality would be as good as the Totem one as well because the website does say that the stitching is hand finished and I think when you look closely, you can really tell the quality as well, which actually leads me on very nicely to my next point. Fabric composition and quality. So let's first talk about fabric composition. I'm of the impression that if you are buying something expensive, 90% of the time you want it to be a natural fiber and you don't want it to be a synthetic material such as polyester or acrylic to name but a few. I've come across so many nice tailored trousers that cost hundreds of pounds, but then I look at the composition and they are mostly polyester and it just confuses me. <laughs> Synthetics are much cheaper materials that brands will often use to keep their costs down but if I'm paying you know hundreds and hundreds of pounds for something then I would want the material to be something uh, more durable, more breathable and just overall better for the environment. That being said, there are always exceptions. Of course, you should always buy within your budget. And so if your budget only allows you to buy things that are made out of synthetics, then I think the next thing you can look for is the quality. Is this well made? Are there any stitches coming loose? You know, and I think that if you shop in that way, then you can still get the best for what you can personally buy. Another exception is occasion wear. That in itself is a very 
usually a more expensive category and so synthetics are used a lot in that category to bring the cost down. Okay, I'm trying not to get off a tangent here because I feel like this is a really big topic. But coming back to the composition of an item, if you're spending a lot of money on something and it's something that you will wear a lot and you want it to last, I personally think that you should try and put that money towards natural fibers. So this jacket is 88% wool and 12% polyester. And the wool used in this jacket is certified by the responsible wool standard, which means that the farmers must meet certain animal welfare, environmental and social requirements. In the case of this jacket, the majority of the fibers are wool. And I think that the polyester has been blended with the wool to create this kind of felt type feel to it. But with that being said, do I wish this jacket was 100% wool? Yes, I kind of do. But with all the previous points that I've made in this video, this isn't a piece that I will kind of just wear for one season and then discard. This is something that I genuinely want to keep in my wardrobe for a really, really long time. How many ways can you wear it? So this is a fun one because you can go off and imagine all the outfits you can put together with your investment piece. And if it is a piece that you have chosen wisely, it should be something that slots so seamlessly into your wardrobe that you can just pull out and wear with anything and that you get really excited about wanting to wear. As a rule of thumb, I try to think of at least eight ways minimum that I can wear anything that I add to my wardrobe. The more ways you can style your piece, then the more you're likely to wear it, uh, bringing that cost per wear down. But as well as thinking of different ways to style it, are there different scenarios that you can wear it in? For example, can you dress it up? Can you dress it down? Can you wear it to work? Can you also wear it on the weekend? Can you take it on holiday with you? It's just the more scenarios and the more ways that you can bring this item into your life, then the more wear you'll get out of it and the more worth it this investment piece will have been to your wardrobe. This is a piece that makes me really excited to get dressed. I genuinely think that clothes are an extension of who you are and how you want the world to see you. They have the ability to just make you walk with more confidence and, you know, get your best foot out there. And this is a piece that does that for me. So I hope that this helped you consider your future purchases a little more carefully. There's always exceptions to everything that I've said, but I hope that maybe this helps you think about how you wanna shop in the future. So I have a short styling portion now and I hope you enjoy. With that being said, please like this video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you aren't already because I have so much more content coming up this year. I film videos weekly and so you'll always be able to see any updates.
They say you burn forever 